Hey everyone, so um, I'm in Washington DC right now for a conference and I am exhausted because I've been talking to people all week and I was just about to um, snuggle up in my Airbnb and read this book I got today, Tribes by Seth Godin. It's been recommended to me like 15 times. Uh, and then I got a comment from someone saying that they're an INTJ and that they want to know how they would know if an ENFJ likes them. And I got so excited about this topic that I just thought I would make a video really quickly about how to tell if an ENFJ likes you. Because the first thing that struck me when I saw that comment is that it's so easy to tell when an ENFJ likes you, but the problem is that that almost makes it hard because we are friendly to everyone typically and we like everyone. The thing that's probably harder to know is like how to tell if an ENFJ is in love with you. But to be honest, if an ENFJ gets to that point, they would probably tell you. Or it would probably be, you'd probably be dating and it wouldn't be a question game. So that's the first thing that comes to mind. But I want to explore this topic about why I think that it's so easy to know if an ENFJ likes you. But why that can also make it hard for other types, especially an INTJ, an INTP, or an ISTP wanting to decipher this. I have a feeling that it must seem hard for them. And maybe it is hard, I don't know. But obviously, I mean, for me, it's easy to know when an ENFJ likes someone because I'm an ENFJ and I, I'm accustomed to reading that behavior. But if an ENFJ likes you, it'll be written all over their face. They, they won't be able to hide it. Um... If an ENFJ likes you, you might be thinking, well, they might like me, but they might be acting that way to everyone. They might just be being nice. So the, the key to understand the difference between an ENFJ just being friendly and an ENFJ liking you and wanting something more from you, I think the question to ask is, did they have to do that? And if they went out of their way and they did something that they did not have to do, then there's that's a good chance that they either like you or are intentionally trying to start a friendship with you, which that's a whole other line. Okay, so I'm realizing as I'm saying this that the word like is kind of confusing. I'll say really, okay, let's start on this end of the spectrum from like all the way to love. Let's start from with like. It's very, 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 very easy to know if an ENFJ likes you because they will like want to hang out with you. They'll want to be around you. They'll be smiling. They'll be talking to you. They'll be asking questions about you. An ENFJ is friendly to everyone that they meet on their first occasion. And has a base level of friendliness to all people, but they will decide quickly if they actually like you or not. And I'm talking like in the base, most basic sense, like for as a friend or as a, I don't know, if they just like your vibe, they will decide that quickly. And they will decide quickly, do I want to pursue any sort of friendship drama and I get to know this person because okay what happens is that an ENFJ hates small talk okay but they want to be friendly and so what will happen is they'll ask questions about the other person and then the questions will either just stop coming because they'll be like I'm not curious about you you're boring you haven't even engaged anything I said or um, that person will make the ENFJ curious and they'll keep asking more and more questions and more and more questions. And so the ENFJ will understand pretty quickly if they like you or if they don't like you. But love comes later. 
And a lot of times people think of ENFJs as like the hopeless romantic type. I think that ENFJs, they fall in love quickly. They know what they want and they get there quickly. But this is not the same as an ENFP that will typically have in their mind their dream guy or girl and then see someone from afar and observe them and then understand that they check all the boxes and then have this sort of far away celebrity crush on them. ENFJs don't do that. Um, I don't think I've ever had a crush on someone that I didn't know well. And so if you are interested in an ENFJ and you're like, how do I know if they like me and you guys don't talk very frequently, they probably don't really like you either that or they want to get to know you but they don't know how but that's different than liking. Like maybe they think you're a cool person and might be interested in getting to know you. But um, it's very unlikely I would say for an ENFJ to be their head in the clouds away like dreaming about you. Like that's not going to happen. Like that's ENFP and INFP territory and that's sort of a misconception uh, if you think of an NF type, you might think that that's what they're doing. But the ENFJ, since we value extroverted sensing over extroverted intuition, it's going to be based on our proximity. But I'm not saying that an ENFP is more um, naive when it comes to love. That's definitely not true. ENFJs can be very naive when it comes to love. So with this extroverted sensing, it's really based on who you're talking to and who you interact with and I've been guilty especially like in middle school and high school of just liking whoever was the most convenient whoever I got along with the most who just was there at the time I would grow to like them because I just see the good in people right off the bat and whoever I feel like I like talking to and I always find myself drawn towards and continuously be curious about that those were the sorts of people that then I would develop an attraction with over time, um, but it would take longer. I am not like a love at first sight sort of person, but I am like I could tell like if I respect someone at first sight. That sort of feeling of love or feeling of romanticism is just not going to happen right off the bat. Because since we use introverted thinking, we're sort of vetting um, a potential partner based on how we worked well together, um, do we have similar interests, do we have an easy flow of conversation with our extroverted feeling, we aren't just feeling this romantic pull in the way that an introverted feeler would. Um, it's more... ENFJs are still emotional and naive, but it's a more logical process of like, yes, we just, we just click. Or like, oh, like, we might want to live in a, the same town the rest of our lives or we have similar um, lifestyle like those sort of things could make an ENFJ more attracted more attracted whenever they see this and so once you have that base level of like the ENFJ is talking to you they're curious about you um, they'll start to just weave their way into your life if they've decided that they want you to be a part of your life now there's been some people, plenty of people, that I did not know I liked them romantically until after I already was like, yes, we're going to be friends. But sometimes I know, like, okay, this is more than friends. But don't get discouraged. I mean, like, I don't know. If you like an ENFJ, they might just, they might not have considered you romantically, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they don't depending on where they are in their life. If they're getting over a breakup or if they're trying to establish their career, it's very likely that they might just be talking to you and getting to know you and not even think, not even be thinking about the relationship aspect in their mind. Um, and they could be interested. But you really, they're not interested unless they are trying to spend time with you, texting you, asking about you, asking a bunch of questions about you. Once an ENFJ has decided, like, yes, they, okay, because the bottom line is that ENFJs are incredibly intentional. Once they've decided, like, yes, this is a person that could be my boyfriend or girlfriend, then 
it's a very it's very intentional like it will not be confusing what they want the only time that an ENFJ will be confusing about what they want is if the ENFJ themselves is confused about what they want and to that if, they, if it seems like an ENFJ is giving you mixed signals it probably means that their intent is not to date you but maybe they have feelings about you or toward you or they maybe they just literally don't know what they want and I would suggest just asking them because I would say that's quite rare um, or maybe they feel like it would ruin a friendship if they went after it and so they're just trying to keep their mouth shut because they want you to say something first that could be it but um yeah, that, I mean, I think that it could get confusing to decipher if an ENFJ likes them because since ENFJs are so extroverted, you might assume like, oh, I wonder how many other people they're talking to this much or like, I wonder if they're just being friendly or I, I don't know, but you just have to remember the intentional piece is that are they just like... There's, you could tell the difference between someone wanting to be your friend and wanting more based on, like, it's like, did they have to do that? Did they have to, um, gosh, what's a good example? Like, if you were hanging out with a friend, or if you were hanging out with a an of J, and they did something, like, Oh, I'm about to get coffee. Do you want some? I'll grab it for you. Oh, no worries. Like, and they're like doing something just like kind of motherly or like kind of like caring for you. Then that's like a good sign because they don't have to do that. And it's honestly something I forget to do to my actual friends. That's like something I do when I'm like trying to impress someone or trying to, it's not even just trying to impress, but like. I don't know, like, if I am into someone, then it's, like, likely for me to, like, try and offer them food or, like, try and make sure that they are having fun. Like, oh, do you want to go here? Like, um, we can leave whenever. Like, we can go somewhere else if you want, if you don't like this bar. Like, we'll be very, like, trying to make sure that, like, you're having a good time. But if they aren't into you, but they are very into you as a friend, then they might just not be as cognizant of that, but they'll still be just as friendly and asking you questions, but they won't be as cognizant about, like, are you having a good time? That's, that's hard to say. It's not just are you having a good time, because they're going to be, you know, Jays will care about that, but... You just have to, I mean, it's hard for me to come up with an example right now, but you have to ask yourself, like, did they go out of their way for me? Because if they did, then that was an intentional move. And as an ENFJ, I always, I tend to like introverts more and more often than not. And it's like, I don't understand why they can't get it through their thick skull, how much I like them a lot of the time. Because I'll always be texting them, asking, do you want to hang out? How was your day? Like, a lot. And, but sometimes I'm like, they should know I like them by now, so I'm not going to insult their intelligence by telling them I like them whenever, um, like, I wanted, like, I would, like, want something in return. Um, that being said, if I was, like, I'm very aware, like, sometimes ENFJs can be afraid of things like this and want to take their time. Also, this is very, very, like, much uh, dependent on past relationships and um, experiences. A lot of things that have to do with relationships, even though type is a helpful tool, a lot of it is based off of how you were shaped in uh, your experiences and how you've been treated and the patterns that you've fallen into. But, um... Gosh, what was I going to say? I forget. Gosh, I was about to make a point. Oh, 
I, but I was going to say, personally, I'm very aware that if I want someone to be my boyfriend or girlfriend, then I would, like, it gets to a point when, like, I have to say it. Um, and honestly, I'm always the one to do things first, and I kind of resent that sometimes. Like, I want someone to, like, ask me out first, or tell me they like me first, or when it gets to that point, like, tell me they love me, or tell me that they, uh, want me to be their girlfriend. Like, I feel like I'm always the one that does those things first because I just can't really hold things in for long. So once I'm sure about that, it's not like it could just be at the back of my mind and I could wait for the right time. Like, once I'm sure about that, it's going to be like just burning up inside me about to burst and it won't stay in for long. And if you feel like an ENFJ is giving you mixed signals, then it could be possible that they feel like they've been holding something in for long and then they're just afraid to tell you. And, uh, because they don't want to ruin anything and they're, they're scared and they, um, might just be acting weird because they're, like, trying to hold something in. So, like all relationship advice, my advice would be, like, to talk to them about it. But I understand that, that being said, yeah, you won't really know until you talk to them about it. But I will say that different types do have different patterns for how they behave. And, um, like, NPs will, like, kind of, like, play hard to get. And, like, at least to me, the perspective looks like they're playing games, although I know that they're processing and like doing their own thing so I'm no judgment there but I will say that the ENFJ approach is to be very expressive very um aware of their emotions and very like not afraid to make the first move and you'll see it on their face if they like you and if they don't like you and like if you keep flirting with them and they don't like you like they're going to look uncomfortable and they might even, like, just walk away awkwardly or, like, pretend to go to the bathroom. Like, they won't, like, be in that situation. Like, we don't put ourselves in situations that we don't want to be in. And the more mature an ENFJ, the stronger this gets. Like, I am sort of growing into this, but I know my dad, who's older, and, like, older ENFJs do this more... Well, they just are, like, not afraid to break the social norms if it's what they want to do. And, I don't know, like, there's this one guy that's always at networking events, and it's not necessarily that he's flirting with me, but he just is a very awkward person to talk to, and he doesn't really quite get social cues, and he'll just be talking about nothing at me for a long time without asking about me, or, like, without having a flow of conversation, and... Whenever people don't get my social cues that, like, I have other things to do, like, or I am busy, or I'm trying to do this other thing, then I, like, have no problem just walking away. Like, I'll be friendly about it, but I'm not, like, it's funny, a lot of ENFPs and INFPs seem to get stuck in conversations out of politeness and out of people-pleasingness, and ENFJs are people-pleasers too, but, like, in a completely different way. Like, when I have gone out uh, to bars with my INFP friend, she always attracts, like, the weirdest people to just be like, hey, like, come here often, and then she'll just nod or whatever, and then he, like, won't go away. And if that happens to me, I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm having a conversation with my friend right now. Um, uh, can I continue talking to her, please? Yeah, thank you. Bye. Nice to meet you. Like, I'll, like, be like, very bold about that stuff, and so just getting an ENFJ to talk back to you, honestly, is good, <laughs> because they 
don't do that unless they want to. And I know it seems like, oh, but they talk to everyone. That's only because we see the good in everyone. But if we don't see the good in someone, if we think someone's annoying, or if they aren't adding any value to our life, then not going to talk to them. Like, not afraid to do that. Like, you can't please everyone. So I hope that this helped how to know if an ENFJ likes you. Like I said, just go ahead and ask them and go read it on their face and also ask yourself, did they go out of their way? Did they have to do this? All right, uh, let me know if you have any other questions or video ideas. Um, like I mentioned, I was, I've been in DC for a conference. It's um, Online News Association and it has been a blast. I've been talking, learning about blogging, podcasting, uh, video and how to monetize things and like I've been thinking a lot about my career and before I made this video I was about to like I said read this book but also like really organize all the platforms that I want to be on and it just keeps coming back to YouTube and I just need to be more consistent like sorry this half of the or this part of the video I'm just ranting for a sec is it like I feel overwhelmed with ideas, but, and I, I always would, I always prefer to make my content whenever I'm inspired, but I don't know if that's sustainable, and also I have to be consistent. The number one thing I kept learning at this conference is that frequency matters way more than the idea, and that there's millions of people with a podcast idea but only so many have the persistence to follow through, and it's the same with videos. And I know I just need to figure out a schedule, and I've been thinking very seriously about my career, and is it draining too much for me, and what can I, what, sh what should I do, what direction should I go, why do I feel so drained that I can't do what I love, and can I can't do what I love consistently. So, anyway, I expect big things coming. Thank you so much for following me. If you liked this video, please subscribe and um, have a good rest of your day.